Kirby and however you... Roseman is the smartest general manager in the NFL. He's the Philadelphia Eagles general manager. He is a risk taker. He's a big, he's a swinger. He'll go big. He'll take big swings. He'll move. He's aggressive. He is kind of the new blood in the NFL, which is don't sit back and wait for the draft to come to you. You go to the draft, you go to the combine, you make things happen. Uh, Philadelphia had ridiculous injuries last year, like unprecedented injuries. I think they can be a Super Bowl team next year. So we wanted to get one of the smart guys at the Combine in the NFL. Howie Roseman joins us in 15 minutes. We're also on Sirius XM Channel 83. Okay, so the Combine is officially underway. A lot of guys are talking now. And, uh, you know, I love it. Everybody has an opinion about the tests and measurements we're seeing on the top quarterback prospects. Joe Burrow yesterday, they measured his hands, and they're like small, like a nine. And Joe Burrow's laughing about it. Why do you think they test this stuff? Why do you think they test this stuff? Now, Patrick Mahomes came out and supported him because Patrick Mahomes' hands are slightly smaller than average. And everybody's like, well, uh, Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes has small hands. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes has the best arm on the planet that overcomes lots of shortcomings. He also had a dad who was a pro athlete. So Mahomes is a significantly better athlete than Joe Burrow and has the best football throwing arm in the world and has Andy Reid as his counsel. We know that Joe Burrow is a decent athlete, not special. He now has small hands, and we know he's got an average arm, not great, and has Zach Taylor, who we don't know if can coach, as his counsel. I remember years ago when Vince Young came out, and I was never a big Vince Young fan. I hated his throwing motion. I said, he reminds me of Tebow. He wins games. That throwing motion, it, he'll never be a great pocket passer. He had a very low wonderlick. And people were like, yeah, it's no big deal. And I'm like, well, it's kind of a, something, or they wouldn't test. I mean, it's, it's, and then everybody said, well, Dan Marino had a low wonderlick. And I was like, yeah, but Dan Marino had the best arm and release in the history of the league. Folks, sometimes Steph Curry's shooting overcomes the fact that he's small and tiny and doesn't play much defense, and he's not real vertical, and he, you can push him around, he's kind of light. If you have world-class arm talent or world-class shooting talent, it can overcome obstacles. But this, this hand size thing, folks, let's just be honest about it. Joe Burrow is a good prospect. He's not a great prospect. He's a great story, and the media loves stories. Okay, Westbrook was a great story when KD left him. Didn't make him a greater player. He was a great story, and he won the MVP. LeBron was the better player and the MVP of the league. But LeBron's story, we were fatigued. We'd seen him dominate the league for a decade, so LeBron doesn't win MVP. It is remarkable to me when we dismiss stuff that matters. It all matters. Arm, maturity, wonderlick, hand size. It's all college productivity, coachability. It's all something. It all matters. It, the interview process, heck, I, we've had people on the couch the last two weeks. They're like, you know, that interview process, that's huge. You're like, really talking for seven minutes? They're like, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I never forget. Johnny Manziel came out, Jameis Winston came out, and Baker Mayfield came out. And I said, they're all really immature in college. Haven't they all been really immature at the next level? Johnny Manziel's out of the league. Baker's been talented but wildly immature with poor judgment, called out his own medical staff, and Jameis Winston's a bakery. He's a turnover machine. That's all judgment. Sam Darnold is the exact quarterback at the Jets as he was at USC. The difference is when he makes those mistakes at, in the NFL, it's way more punitive. They all get picked off. At USC, he made mistakes, but Utah guys or Oregon State guys didn't pick him off. Joe Burrow was a remarkable story. 
but he's a good prospect. He's not a special prospect. And by the way, I don't love him making fun of the hands thing. It's a little cocky for me. It's a little too much for me. I really like the way Tua is handling all of this. Tua's got a medical crisis on his hands, and every time you talk to Tua, he's just humble. He understands the concerns. This is not the end of the world for Joe Burrow, but the idea that all of this stuff doesn't matter a little. Of course it matters. In the last decade in the NFL, three players have had concerns about hand size. Chad Henney, Ryan Tannehill, and Jared Goff. <sighs> Well, in the history, in the last decade, those are the small hand guys. Goff has been the best, and most of you don't like him as much as I do. And he does have a fumble issue at times. So, and the other thing about Joe Burrow, he did say this yesterday. So, uh, here's some sound Joe Burrow at the Combine about the Bengals. Yeah, of course I want to be the first pick. You know, it's, that's, that's every kid's dream, you know. I'm, I've worked really, really hard for this opportunity, and I'm blessed to be in this position. I'm not going to not play. Um... I'm a ball player. Whoever picks me, I'm going to go show up. I'm just not going to be presumptuous about, you know, what, what they want to do. I, it's the draft. You guys have been covering it for a long time. You never know what's going to happen. So that just guarantees, that's fine. That just guarantees, though, that he will go to the least talented roster in his division. Forget the AFC. Forget the NFL. In his division, without question, he will now go to easily the least talented roster. He is saying that this morning, and good for him. That's fine. As we said, we figured he would go to Cincinnati. It takes a lot of courage <laughs> to bail on your home state. Uh, Cincinnati doesn't have a history of wanting to negotiate and move around in the draft. They're going to draft him and say, you're coming or not. But, um, yeah, I, th this idea that you just dismiss hand size or you, you, dis you dismiss judgment in college, you dismiss you know, the one that means nothing, it all is a story. It's a fabric, and you come out, and it matters. And the size nine hands matters more for Joe Burrow than Patrick Mahomes because Patrick Mahomes throws a football better than any human on the planet. And hand size can be like Steph Curry. When you're the best in the world at sh something, shooting threes, it can overcome other issues. All right, uh, tonight, the reason I wrapped up my uh, Narcos Mexico season two, because tonight Zion plays LeBron, very exciting. You know I love Zion. I think he's fantastic, and I think he's really, really important for the NBA. Um, I I'm a believer that if you're a great high school player, you should go to college for a year like a Duke or a Carolina or a Kansas or whoever. Uh, the only reason I know about Zion is college basketball. It's a great marketing platform, and he is an incredibly likable, dynamic watchable kid i just love his story uh, but there are people now that are talking about hey is zion in terms of marketing and stardom the next lebron folks no and it has nothing to do with just his game we do this we just don't appreciate the people we have i've been doing this 30 years there are three athletes that have simply been as big as the league they play in. Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, and LeBron James. And that is it. If Tom Brady retires tomorrow, I watch less New England Patriot football. I don't watch less football. Okay, Michael Jordan left. The NBA lost 50% of its ratings, meaning he was had equal value to the league. Tiger Woods, out of contention. Even the Masters plummeted 50% loss in ratings, meaning Tiger was at least, at least half as big as the rest of the sport. If, if James Harden retired tomorrow, or, or Giannis, or Kemble Walker, or, or Russell Westbrook, league would be fine. If LeBron retired tomorrow, revenues would sink. The salary cap would go down. So as much as we like Zion, we tend to do this in sports. And, and I don't know if they do this in politics or Hollywood. I think we do it in politics, where when you have a good president, nobody appreciates it. We are so lucky. I feel so lucky that I got to watch Michael Jordan in my, when I'm in my 20s, and I'm starting as a sportscaster, and Michael Jordan owned the world. 
And then here I get in my 30s and early 40s, and Tiger Woods owned the world, and now LeBron. But it's interesting, with Tiger and LeBron, and maybe it's social media, maybe it's the snarkiness that's devoured all of the country, uh, the division we've had in the last 15, 20 years, I do think social media is a part of it. I never thought we appreciated Tiger in the moment. Half the people liked him and half didn't. And I was always like, listen, I, Tiger Woods changed my television habits. It'd be like 4 o'clock on a Sunday. I was like, oh, Tiger. I mean, they're like two shows in my life have done that, maybe three. The NFL, The Sopranos, and Tiger Woods. Oh, it's 4 o'clock on a Sunday. I got to get to a television. So as much as I like Zion, do you get MJ, Tiger, LeBron? They're half as big as the league. And you're lucky LeBron always talks about our game. Many of you think LeBron is selfish. I thought last year he was distracted. Distracted isn't selfish. Okay, LeBron, the league needs him, and he knows it. That's why whenever LeBron talks, you ever notice what he talks about? He talks about, quote, our game. He's the ambassador and the face. He is the foundation of this house. Zion is just a really cool sports car dad bought this weekend and parked in the garage. Can't wait to drive it. Oh, it's fun. Goes around the curves real great. But it's different between the cool sports car and the foundation and the mortgage and the title of the house, and that is LeBron. Can't wait to watch him tonight. Uh, Zion is, I, I got to tell you, there are not many players at 19 years old. I mean, I like Luka and Dallas. Like him. Zion gets me to a TV. Luca doesn't get me to a TV. Not much. Zion gets me to a TV. All right. Uh, Howie Roseman will be joining us in just a couple of minutes. Make 2020 your year to start your new life as an IT pro. Check it out. Go to mycareer.edu. Take your first career evaluation today. It, it never fails in the NFL. So you, you get these combines. And, you know, the local fans, they all love their players. And if you don't love their players, just never forget this. 30% of the first round is not going to be as good as you think. Fanboys, bloggers, nerds on Twitter, it 30% of the first round will underachieve. I think the receiver for Oklahoma, CeeDee Lamb, a little overrated. A little thin for me. I think there's a million guys in this. I think there's 15 guys in this draft. I think that offense, uh, you know, quarterbacks and receivers at Oklahoma, they just put up massive numbers because Lincoln Riley's probably the smartest young offensive coach in football. So, you know, that's, that's my takeaway. Um, I think there's one receiver I'd take in the first round. Then by the second round, third round, fourth round, we may have 9, 12 receivers per round. There's, I would take six offensive tackles in the first round. I'd take one receiver. When you have a draft with 50 players at one position, wide receiver, 50 draftable players, why would you take one in the first round? Why? Why? I mean, in the only guy in this draft at wide receiver, Jerry Judy at Alabama, is different. He, he may not be Randy Moss different. He is going to be a star day one if he goes to a team that has a relatively decent quarterback in O-line. Howie Roseman... Maybe the smartest GM in the National Football League is going to be joining us from the Combine coming up next. We've all heard of Casper, the sleep company, with outrageously comfortable mattresses and incredibly fair prices. Uh, Award-winning mattresses, sheets, pillows, duvets, transforming the bedroom, the way we sleep one snooze at a time. Four layers of premium foam, back aligned with zoned support, which is trademarked to help your back. Bedding, bed frames, dog bed, we got that too. Right now, great offer. Save up to 20% on mattresses now for a month through March 23rd. Save 10% off the Essential, 15% off the Casper, 20% off the Way. Now, limit one offer per customer and order. Additional shipping supplies for Hawaii. It's a little out there. Alaska and certain areas of Canada. Go to Casper.com slash terms, conditions. Comfortable bed sheets, pillows, duvets, dog bed, all good, Casper.